It's about a quarter after six, and time now for What's Trending. There is not a doubt in this world that when St. Valentine inspired Valentine's Day, he probably did not have this in mind. Look at this, guys. Pink mac and cheese, which is flavored like candy. Who knew it would take centuries to reach this culinary masterpiece, but we're finally here. Kraft Heinz is releasing this ultra-romantic dish, sure to fire up any relationship just in time for the day made for lovers. But you can't buy it. Nope. If you want to prove your Romeo medal, you'll have to register on CandyCraftMacAndCheese.com and hope to win one of only a thousand boxes that the company is giving away. So the million dollar question is, how in the world did they make it pink? Kraft Heinz says that it's from beetroot and carrots. The company also says the rosy sauce contains hints of fructose, vanilla, and other natural flavors. Uh, wow. It's, I mean, just wow, guys. I saw this yesterday on social media, and I am the biggest mac and cheese fan ever. I love mac and cheese, but even I don't think I would try this. You know, number one, the pink is off-putting to me. Number two, the fact that it tastes sweet like candy. You know, I want my macaroni and cheese to taste like cheese. And if I'm going to add anything to it, maybe something savory, maybe a little bacon, a little brisket, something right. like that. Um, but not a sweet mac and cheese. Like, ew. <laughs> I, I'm right there with you, Marissa, except I, I think I would try it just to just to get the experience. <laughs> I don't know if I would like it per se, but, um, you know, if someone handed me a bowl, I feel like I would would have to try it out. Um, <laughs> gosh, I, I just I've never seen anything like that. And I want to know what guy like ran into the the room and was like, oh, guys, I got a great idea. And everyone somewhat approved <laughs> yeah. it and it had to go through all these steps. And now we have pink candy flavored mac and cheese. Um, a little unsettled, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm sure that <laughs> those 1,000 boxes will be in high demand, nevertheless. Oh, sure. Oh, without a doubt, if it wasn't, I mean, why wouldn't they sell this in stores? That'd be one way to make money very easily. And I mean, I'd be, I would be honest with you all, I would want to try this too, and just to see what it tastes like. I mean, to me, it sounds pretty good, I'm sure, because there's a lot of things that meets the eye, and you're like, what? But then you try it, and it's actually pretty good. So I'm willing to go all in and try it. Well, we will have. We got to get you a box. We all have to sign up for you, Deb. We'll yes. sign up. <laughs> all right. We'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. Well, we may be lucky winners, but uh, so was this next guy in this story here. An 84-year-old man from Maine has been to every Super Bowl, and thanks to a sudden surprise, he's headed this year to Tampa for this year's Super Bowl. Every year since the first one in 1967, Don Crisman has made it to the big game. This year, he finally thought his run might be over, though. However, the NFL, which sells him tickets at face value, said they were going to work it out. A little more than $4,000 later, Don has a flight booked with his daughter. Of course, there is some concern. However, Don has already had one of his COVID vaccine doses. His daughter, who works in healthcare, has had both of hers. He says he'll be cautious while traveling and it'll feel different being spaced from everyone. But the chance to see Tom Brady grab another ring on his home field will make sports history. Don just wishes Brady was wearing a different jersey. And as someone who comes from New England, I can, uh, you know, kind of understand that sentiment. Um, regardless, it's so cool to see him being able to go to this uh, game. Uh, he's been so lucky and so fortunate to be able to go all these past years. Uh, but so great to see that tradition being kept kept alive um, and it's just so cool to see how people are coming together organizations are coming together uh, to provide those opportunities during this really difficult time Right. I'm so glad that he's still able to go, especially after literally being at every single one. I wonder how many people have done that. I wonder if he's the only one or just, I would assume, just a, a, you know, a handful of people have had that opportunity. And I think what's even cooler, too, is that you know, it sounds like the people involved with the Super Bowl themselves make sure that there's a ticket for him available. Even you know, he has to pay for it, but they make sure that he can go. Yeah, without a doubt there. And it's really exciting to see that this tradition will continue. I'm really kind of curious to see if there are more people out there. So who knows, maybe we'll see more stories like this and we really have to wait and see. But keeping the sports team going, this year's European Green Cabalati in southern Finland has added ski trails in the city and rolled out what they say is the world's first urban ski sharing system. When the roads get icy and the snow knee deep, skiing is a fast way to get around. And that is why lots 
he decided to roll out a public ski sharing scheme, City Skis, which works in a similar way to city bike sharing. The skis can be borrowed from one of three ski points, two in the city center and one near the city ski stadium, where they have to be returned to after use. Lottie is known as a winter sports city and has hosted the, the Nordic World Ski Championship seven times with a total of 111 miles of cross-country skiing trails in the area. Most locals are ski enthusiasts and in addition to the already existing trail network, new skiing trails have been laid out in the city center and we have a lot of people that enjoy skiing up here so maybe when the pandemic's over they should go check that out over in Finland. That's an amazing idea. I love to, you know, I've seen, of course, the bike sharing in larger cities, which is so cool. But now, you know, why don't they use all of their resources available to them and do the ski sharing? And of course, that'll also help reduce uh, carbon emissions and all of that. So a fantastic idea. Yeah, absolutely great idea, especially in a place like that where, you know, it's just so possible and, and a, uh, you're able to get around like that. Uh, it'd be really cool to see, you know, how that evolves and maybe if, if it ever lands in a place uh, like here.